Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Richard Ricky. Um, uh, today, I'm going to cover a topic on uh, the role of an independent director in the overall corporate governance scenario. It's important to note that uh, uh, the, uh, the real um, functioning of a company is done through its management, that is the chairman and managing director. They are the ones who set the tone, who set uh, the tone at the top, as we call it. And they said the, uh, how the corporate governance in that organization is going to function. So primary responsibility lies with the founders, promoters, uh, or professional uh, chairmen, managing directors, as it may be. However, the role of an independent director has assumed a huge amount of responsibility in today's time, especially in the current time we live where their entire business climate has changed and technology has become very pervasive in everything that we do. And uh, it is important uh, that the role of the independent director is re-looked at to see that they can function and discharge their responsibilities. For this, the independent director will have to get themselves updated on the latest technology, because many of the people who come as independent directors are people who have retired from their current jobs and may not have experienced this new wave of technology that is there. So there needs to be some serious trainings and understanding of the technology that is to be used because it is this technology that is changing how companies function. So that's the first thing. Next, what is happening is that there is a huge amount of activist shareholder uh, uh, activities which are happening even in India today. It was there uh, internationally for a long time. India, it has recently come in and the activist shareholders are asking a lot of questions of the independent directors on the governance, on the kind of decisions that are taken at the board meetings. So <clears throat> it is important that we sit back and first understand what does the word independence uh, mean? And what does it mean in the truest sense of the word? And when we say somebody is independent, uh, what do we mean? It is just not in uh, by legally that you're independent because you're not related or you got nothing to do with the company, but also in spirit and mind, you're completely independent and are able to discharge your responsibilities ac accordingly. And the reason why independent directors are so much in focus is very simple, because amongst all the people who sit on the board, probably the independent directors have the greatest amount of impartiality, because they're not connected to any group, they're not connected, they are independent, and uh, they also have to use a huge amount of their integrity uh, because they are representing the larger stakeholders of the company and not just the majority shareholder. So they need to live by this uh, spirit of impartiality and integrity. Companies on their part um, uh, need to also identify capable directors, independent directors who are able to dispense the responsibility in a proper way that they have no conflicts of interest, whether perceived or real. And to ensure that there needs to be a proper process for the appointment of the independent directors. So uh, there needs to be a proper interview process. There needs, uh, you know, one can go through headhunters um, uh, and uh, choose the right candidate for the company. More independent the process, the better it is. And while looking at this process, the following areas need to be looked at, the experience, the specific skill sets uh, that they may need, the company may need at that point of time. And at the different history of the company, they need different skill sets. So it's very important that the independent director brings that. Industry knowledge is very important for certain, I mean, not for every director, but for some of them, they need to understand the industry in which the company operates. And also overall, one has to understand what is the value this independent director will bring to the table while he's an independent director. Independent directors not only help bring checks and balances in place and looks at the controls, the governance, the risk management, but they also have to help in the strategic growth objectives of the company, help the CEO um, uh, with relevant inputs because of the wisdom that they bring to the table to help him in his growth, help him or her in his growth agenda. One of the roles that the company, that the independent directors play is ensuring good governance for the company. And for this, for this, it is important to have a senior independent director or lead independent director from amongst the bunch of independent directors we have. In many good companies which are uh, well run, this position exists. 
So the lead independent director will work with the chairman on the agenda of the board and will also represent the interests of the other independent directors. So not only does the agenda, but he also represents the interest of all the other independent directors. They have one somebody to go to. They also need to ensure that the time allocated for discussing the agenda items are sufficient, that the quality of input of the board papers are good, and they have been sent well in time to the board members so that they could have read it before they came for the meeting. Uh, it is important the independent director understands the business of the company, which I've discussed earlier. Then only can they actively participate in the board meetings and add value uh, through uh, this way. This would amount to you know, visits to the factory or understanding the processes, sitting independently with the senior management of the company to understand some of the activities, uh, which is of interest to the independent director so they can bring their relevant knowledge to bear. And they, uh, so, uh, so it's important that the independent directors get a good training on the business of the company, factory visits, and also sitting with management independently. There are a few areas which independent directors need to look at very carefully. One is <clears throat> the strategy of the company. They need to actively start, uh, challenge the strategy of the company. They need to look at the financial information and see where the issues and challenges are. Are they through their experience being able to see something which they can then guide the company to be careful? Uh, they need to look at all related party transactions um, and how are they being treated and uh, governed? They need to ensure that the reputation of the brand of the company is protected. So how they operate. So the brand reputation is very, very important. And how is the company placed to deal with the external environment, you know, the socioeconomic issues, et cetera, the new technologies which are coming in, the new business models that are there. Is the company adopting all this new technology, looking at how they can change their business models to remain relevant in today's time? They also need to scrutinize the performance of the management and hold them accountable for their actions. Um, one other role that the independent director can play very well is ensuring that there's a proper succession plan in place for all the key positions of the company. They need to ensure it and not only ask if it is there, but also see what process was followed while it was done. Uh, uh, then uh, they also need to see whether the company has a good business continuity plan to deal with crisis situation like the pandemic and similar other crises that will uh, come and impact the company. And uh, I would like to conclude by saying that the independent directors need to carry their roles and responsibility in the larger interests of the stakeholders and actively contribute in shaping the strategic growth trajectory of the company. However, they should not forget that they are the gatekeepers of the corporate governance in the truest sense. Thank you. Can I now log off?